All right, we're back with the 2004 Chevy Tahoe 100,000 mile service. This video is for the fuel filter. First, an important note from Mr. T-Rex right here. Only Flex Fuel 5.3s have a fuel filter. The eighth digit of the VIN number, Z only. That means if your Tahoe has a T or something else in the eighth digit of the VIN number, that means going from left to right, eighth digit, you do not have a fuel filter, only if it's a Z, only if it has the flex fuel engine. I can't stress this enough. In fact, I'm probably just going to put a little banner right across the top so that there's no mistaking this. The last thing that I want is for somebody that does not have a flex fuel Tahoe to think that theirs has a serviceable fuel filter. I don't want to give that impression. I don't want to use that bad. So if you do not have a Z, this does not apply to your truck, and I'm sorry for wasting your time. Now we do have a few tools that we're going to need to do this fuel filter. We have a 13 16th wrench, particularly one that has an open end. We also have a 5 8 flare wrench. And then I also had to crack open this low profile fuel filter disconnect set. The problem with this one is, is because this part is so long, it can't actually get up in there. Now maybe if you forced it, you might be able to get up in there, but they make this special tool for a reason. Adapter works on 5.3 Suburban Tahoe Yukon Avalanche and Select Silverado and Sierras. Now you're going to see this video with my Tahoe up on the lift. If you've watched my Trailblazer fuel filter video or my Chevy CK pickup fuel filter video, I did those both on the ground. I can just as easily do this on the ground. I'm just doing it in the lift because, well, I can. It's going to give you guys a much better camera angle. So that's what we're doing. You don't need a lift to do this. If you're a little bit husky like myself, you might have to lift the frame up a little bit, put it on a jack stand just to give you some wiggle room under there. That's probably what I would have to do, but let's just get into it. Okay, I'm under the hood. I'm just going to pop this cover off. This relay right here is our fuel pump relay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the engine. I'm going to pull this relay out and wait for the motor to stall. So I'm just going to pull out this fuel pump relay. Now I'm just going to crank the motor. We've relieved the pressure from the fuel system without really doing much more than pulling out a relay. I've also gotten the habit of pulling the gas cap off. One time I had the gas cap on, I think it was on like an S10 or something, and when I took that line off that fuel filter, she just dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped, so I just got in the habit of doing this. So far it's worked good for me. So I'm underneath the Tahoe right now. That is the driver's front wheel up there in front of that lift leg. And coming back here, kind of like right next to the transfer case, this is the fuel filter right here. Now I've already noticed we've got some crusty rustiness on this bolt right here. Basically it has a bolt on one side and a push in clip on the other. I'm going to go ahead and soak this motherfucker in some PB Blaster. Fuck Snapple, this is the best stuff on earth. I'm going to let that thing soak there for a minute or so just to hopefully we don't have a lot of aggravation getting that off. As you can tell by this crusty rusty band, this filter's probably been on here for a long time. It may be the original for all we know. So I have a drain pan here ready for action. So this silver nut right here is part of the filter assembly and then this nut is part of the line. That's what we're trying to separate. I have a 13 16 wrench which is going to hold the, the filter basically. And then I have a, a flare wrench, a 5 8 So this little guy right here is a 13 millimeter. Now we've got to try to get this fitting off of this line. And to do that, we need a special tool. 
I have a standard uh, fuel line release tool. Ugh, fuck. This thing's too big. What the hell are we going to do now? So right here we've got a low profile fuel filter disconnect set. I got this from Matco. You can tell how often I've used this. And what this is going to allow us to do is go in there with a much lower profile of a tool and disconnect that line. This uh, wasn't the easiest thing in the world to set up. But I've managed to get it in there after some finagling. What I'm trying to do is from the back side here is to push the line in this way and then push the tool this way while trying to wiggle the thing out. The tool, when you push the tool in, it it disengages the fingers from the line. Come on, you fucking hussy. Oh, this looks like I got it. It. Okay, this is what the line looks like on the inside. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but inside here, there's a couple fingers. And what those fingers do is, they click onto the fuel filter line. What we're doing with the tool is, we're getting it in there to kind of push the fingers away, which will let it clear the little humpy here in the filter. I don't know if you can see the humpy from where the camera is right now. Now I'm probably going to edit down my struggle getting this off, but I spent probably a good 5-10 minutes trying, just trying to get this off. I have no regrets taking out the bolts to this bracket here but I would say it's not necessary to do it. Probably shouldn't have done it, but whatever. This is what just came out of that filter. Are you seeing that? Does that look like what came out of the gas pump? Probably should never do what I'm about to do, but It took me some, some, some real pressure to blow through this fucking thing. Also worth noting, this line has a little o-ring at the end of it. trying to do is just carefully uh, you hear it click in uh, she's not coming back out mr. 13 sixteenths is going to hold that and mr. 5 eighths is going to tighten this bolt down I'm not going crazy tightening these, but I am making sure that it is snug as fuck. So he's clipped in and I verified that I cannot pull him back out with my hands. Once those little fingers got past that lip, they're, they're locked down. It's not coming off. I'm going to go ahead and put these bolts that I took out back in. You know, the ones that I guess really didn't need to take out, but like, as you may have read, I do not know that much about these Tahoes. I've never worked at a Chevy dealer. And I've never really hung out on any Chevy Tahoe forms. So even stuff like this fuel filter replacement, this may very well have been the first time that I've ever done one on a Tahoe. Well, at least this, uh, this generation Tahoe 
So I didn't know you didn't have to take these off. And just to keep it real, I'm going to leave this part in the video. All right, I'm going to put the truck down. I've got to take this gas out of here because I'm getting high as a motherfucker just standing over this bucket breathing in these fumes. So see in the channel description page, I wasn't bullshitting when I said that we're both going to learn stuff about these trucks. I meant it. You know what I'm saying? So, just going to put our gas cap on. We're going to put our fuel pump relay back in. The terminals are biased diagonally, so it doesn't matter which way it goes in. I guess if you have OCD, you can make all the 8866s face the same way, but whatever. Now, before I go and start this thing up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle the key on, off, on, off, and just see if I see anything leaking. Probably hard to see, but I don't see anything running down there. Now, when you turn the key on on this, it's like the trailblazer. The pump's only going to energize for about two seconds. You know, if we did have something either not connected right or whatever, she would dump right now. So let's start her up. So this is the area about where we were working. I don't see nothing dripping. I didn't really wipe that down a lot, so I'm not really sweating that little bit of moisture right there. No big deal. For fucks and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and put it back up in the air and just look it over. Well, everything seems pretty cool. Don't smell nothing, don't see nothing, so I think we're good to go. Alright, so let's see. Fuel filter. $10.78 at Walmart. So $10.78. So let's just go here into calculator because I'm... I guess I'm pretty bad at math right now. So we had $42 for the oil and filter change, $16.94 for the air filter, and today was $10.78 for the fuel filter, bringing our grand total so far for the 100,000 mile service to $69.72. I really did not want to make separate air and fuel filter videos because going by, you know, I think we set a $100 limit for each service, and I wanted to do as much with the $100 as we could, but because the non-flex fuel Tahoes don't have a fuel, fuel filter, I didn't think it was right to just include it in the air filter video. Now, how often should you do the fuel filter replacement on your flex fuel Tahoe? I'm pretty sure that the book said it was every 30,000 miles. Uh, this truck is new to us. It just turned 110,000 miles on it. We're kind of catching up on maintenance particularly the 100,000 mile service. So since the history of this fuel filter was unknown, we went ahead and did it as part of the 100,000 mile service. Now forget about mileage and an interval. You know, if I was to look underneath and, and just see this crusty, rusty looking thing under there, it you can almost just tell by looking at it that it's been under there for a very long time. So you can go by mileage, you can go by just the way that this thing looks. It looks like it may have went down with the Titanic. and you know, that's what you could do to determine if you even need to do it. When I did the oil and filter, I looked around the Tahoe, I noticed it had a fuel filter. Now I went to Walmart today and I knew without a doubt that this truck has a fuel filter on it. Not disputing it, you know what I mean? I've seen it with my own eyes, this has a fuel filter. And I used their little electronic box to, it was like an oil and air and fuel filter lookup machine. No listing for the Tahoe. I went then to the catalog and flipped through it. And again, there was no listing for the Tahoe. Even though it listed the versions of the 5.3, I think it had the, the T-VIN and the Z-VIN, there was no listing for a fuel filter. And I'm like, well, this is fucking stupid. You know what I'm saying? Well, right above Tahoe was Suburban. And for the Suburban 5.3 flex fuel with the VIN of Z, it had a listing for a fuel filter. Well, it didn't take much to put two and two together to say it's the same freaking motor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, this fuel filter may fit multiple applications, some of which may have this little plastic retaining clip on there. That's why it's included, even though we didn't have to use it. So this is where we're at with the 100,000 mile service so far. And just keep watching, and we're just going to keep going down through the list. So thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, subscribe. Too much shit.